this is Danny Saber, and you're watching the All Over the Place podcast, where the fun sanity never ends. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to All Over the Place, the official podcast of Media Pub Live. I'm your host, Eric Provosnik, with, as always, Jim Culver. How you doing, Jim? I'm great. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. It's another music episode tonight. Another music three for so I'm, I'm, I'm primed and ready to go. And Christine. Right. Oh, hello. hello. Christine Leninger in the house. The same house. <laughs> Oh, if that's that's the greatest clue in the world, folks. But first, before we get to uh, well, actually, uh, Marty, unfortunately, not going to be joining us again tonight. Might be dropping some inserts. Mar- Marty's feeling a little under the weather, so please keep him in your your thoughts, your prayers, and uh, we'll hopefully have Marty back on this show. Fingers crossed with dropping some inserts in. If not, uh, very soon back here with us here on all over the place. But I'd like to remind everyone. Uh, again, we're continuing to grow, folks. More subscribers this week over at YouTube. So don't forget, when you're watching the show, after you watch the show, make sure you are liking, subscribing, and sharing with at least one person. At least one person when you're done with your listen. Greatly appreciate it as we continue to grow. Thank you so much. Also here on All Over the Place, we finally have... Oh, can, can I have that uh, introductory um, uh, instrument again? <laughs> Thank you. We're not sure if that's a, that's a kazoo or what it is, but it's introductory. I like it. Bugle ask. We now have at the Round and Third Production store over at Launch Cart, we have all over the place merchandise. Merch. Merch is in the AOTP house. So please head over to Round and Third Productions, and that is going to be R O U N D I N dash T H I R D dash P R O D U C T I O N S. Make sure I got this right. Daunt, daunt. Productions.launchcart.store. And that'll automatically give you the slash to shop there and get yourself mugs, caps, t shirts, hoodies, uh, tank tops. Uh, do, do we have the, uh, the, the mid cut too? What are those called, Christine? What, what, what are we going to get for Marty? The uh, <laughs> crop. Crop top. We're going to get Marty a crop top. But if for you want Marty. a crop top, they're there for you. He's got to wear it on camera. He's got to. That's right. Well, Christine's going to wear wear her uh, her uh, tank top at some point. So, but yes. And work for the Rolling Stones concert. That's right. Nice. Stone Cold Pimpin' with Mick and Company. I love it. But that's roundin third productions.launchcart.store. Check it out, folks. Get your merch all over the place. Merch over there. Again, we thank you for your support. And as always, remember to like, subscribe, and share with at least one person while you're listening or when you're done. Today's threefer, as I mentioned before at the top of the show, it's music oriented again. Everyone put on your shock face. So tonight we are doing our our three favorite songs that feature horns and our plus one is a WTI. What the instrument? We may like it in there. We may say that does not belong here, but that's the plus one tonight. And Christine, we're going to kick it off with you as we go Clockwise tonight. I like it when you start up with me. <laughs> I'm fussing. Anyhow, no pressure. Okay, so <laughs> my number three, I'm going to start with um, Pearl in the Shell by Howard Jones. It was the first thing that I th- thought of when this topic came up, and it has a glorious horn section in that song and um you know 80s horrific and uh that's it that's all i got <laughs> keeping it short and sweet are we sure because howard jones is such a so proficient with the keyboards is do we think is that actually a a, a horn or is it a keyboard i would say it's actual horns but i may be wrong hey either way it's you know something <laughs> Well, I just know maybe when it came out, maybe on the studio album, it is a horn. But I know when we saw him live that I don't remember seeing a horn anywhere. But hmm. through, the, through the magic of, of, of Howard Jones, he makes it sound good. Awesome call. Jim, over to you. Okay. Uh, for my number three, uh, I'm going with Vehicle by Ides of March, ah. which is yes. Uh, I'm biased because it was my favorite song to play in the pet band in school. Uh, absolute blast to play and uh, just a fantastic song. Uh, and 
I really could couldn't not include it because I mean the horns are really the entire song. I mean, does anybody even remember the lyrics from that song, or do they just remember that? Da 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 da. I mean, I'm it's your friendly just, stranger in a black sedan. Want to hop inside my car? Okay, does anyone does anyone that's not musical autistic remember it? I don't think so. <laughs> it, so well, well, disclaimer here that I was actually granted permission by the writer of that song, Jim Peterick, from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Eyes of okay. March. Uh, I got uh, the rights for that to use as the uh, theme song, unofficial theme song for my uh, Looking for Oscar documentary. Nice. I did not know that. It's so 70s-tastic. Okay. There you, there you have it. So you get a special connection for you as well. And, and it was one of my honorable mentions, so thank you for taking it. I like it. Yep. You betcha. Yeah, can't can't go wrong with that one. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's really what everybody remembers from that song is is is, I mean that that song is the horns. It it just that that man, it just that epic from that epic intro. It just just plows all the way through that song, and it's amazing. So got to got to have it on my list. Drives a song called Vehicle. I love it. Indeed. Excellent call. All right, for mine, I'm going to stick in the '70s as well. But I did not hear this song until after I heard it first in the 80s and then in the 90s. This song has been sampled over 150 times by different hip-hop artists. I first heard it when Public Enemy used it on It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, Show Them What You Got, more prominently featured by Rex and Effect in Rump Shaker, and uh, most recently uh, the song No Better by Janelle, uh, Jonelle Monet. Janelle Monet, she uses it. And who else? Uh, Ice Cube used it in uh, the song Friday, and Jay-Z Boy, here, here, Jay Z really stretched, and instead of show him what you got, the PE song, he flipped the apostrophe EM and show me what you got. Jay Z, hats off to you for being so original. Uh, but the song itself is by a band called the Lafayette Afro Rock Band, and the song is called Darkest Light. And just that, that, uh, that, that smooth, smooth as silk, just as you hear all throughout uh, Rump Shaker, most prominently. Love well, that saxophone, as as Homer would say to Lisa. That's my number three, Christine. Over to you for your number two. Okay. Well, um, I am going to go with a um, Fleetwood Mac classic, um, Tusk, which has a whole band in it, <laughs> but prominently horns. U USC marching band, correct, Jim? Yes. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Yep. Nice. That's a great one. Oh, and mm -hmm. folks, in case you were wondering why none of us, we've gone through an entire round and a third now, and none of us have mentioned three, and I will even go so far as to say four bands for me because they feature uh, a, uh, a saxophone player in their lineup who also doubles on uh, guitar and other multi-instruments in the band. Uh, or maybe, no, I'm sorry, Kirk just plays guitar and sax. But Earth, Wind, and Fire, Chicago, and Blood, Sweat, and Tears, we have removed from our, our consideration just because those bands are horn driven bands. So we, and who knows, maybe down the line, we may even have like a three for involving just those bands or from individually all of those bands. I, I could see that happening down the line because they're just, we've, it's too many. So Earth, Wind, and Fire, Chicago, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And the one I mentioned uh, very briefly, number four, I will even go so far as to say In Excess. Kirk Pengilly on the saxophone in that band. I've exempted all of those for me. So that's, uh, in case you were wondering why none of those have been mentioned yet, or they may be waiting for our number one, you won't hear them. But like I said, down the line, I highly suspect you'll be hearing a three for involving one, if not all four of those bands. But for now, Jim, over to you with your second pick. My number two is a little bit more contemporary, but it, it to me, it always feels, has always felt like, a uh, more of a 70s tune just in, in the style that it was made uh and that is uh uptown funk mark ronson Ooh. and i think that honestly has some of the best horns at, on any song i've heard in geez the last 20 years maybe you know and just you know just that that's it's such a fun a fun lick that they have on that one uh keeps keeps uh keeps everything going going uh full speed ahead and it's yeah just just a real fun upbeat song uh and it's been of course played ad nauseum and re in various references in the last few years but uh but uh yeah great song so that is my number Sorry. two 
I would never say ad nauseum. That song is just too damn good. That's one of my favorite songs of the last 25 years. Awesome. I like the pick. Yep. Going to my number two, we're going to go all the way back to the 1960s right now. And it's a cover of a song that uh, is one of my favorites, and probably a song in my top five songs of all time. But Joe Cocker's cover of the box tops, The Letter, specifically his version from the Mad Dogs and Englishman live cut. He takes an already awesome song, and I don't necessarily want to say it's better than the box tops, but I will say it is at least as good. The horns in the letter are just a, a, a phenomenal arrangement. Love Joe Cocker, the letter. Good choice. Can't can't go wrong with Joe, and his stuff was his stuff was fantastic, and he was all over the place in the seventies. But but yeah, that was a great that's a great pick. His, that's a, a real fun tune he made. Fat, as fat as he could, anyone could come close to blood, sweat, and tears. But yeah, Joe Cocker, love, love the letter. All right, Christine, to you, number uno. Okay, well, before I get to my number one, hope it's okay that I do a couple um, ones that I didn't pick for my top choice. 100% um, all right here on All Over the Place. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> um, I wanted to mention um, No Reply at All by Genesis, which is a phenomenal horn song. And then a couple that I actually didn't even really, I don't know, I, like it kind of was off my radar that they had horns in them, but I was like, yeah, that's a good song. And I forgot that it had such great horns in it. Um, the Way You Move by Outkast off the Speaker Box album. That one's really good. Um, and then um, the National Anthem by Radiohead. Hmm. Which is Interesting choice. And it has horns in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for my top pick, I'm actually going with, because there's something that I love about um, new wave music, and I'll talk a little bit more about it later, about how they love to like bring in random sounds and instruments and like it's all, you know, just a smattering of sound, you know, in a lot of the um, new wave music. But anyhow, I'm going with um, Close to Me by The Cure. Like the whole, um, like practically the whole second half of that song is all horns, and it's uh, it's awesome, love it. And you don't think of think of horns too often when you think of the Cure, but uh, right? they definitely but made it work there. There's actually articles that I found while I was doing my research that were talking about whatever happened to Robert Smith's hair and the horn section out of their band. Did they get lost in Robert Smith's hair? That's well, maybe. Was that part of it the might, theory? It know. might still be. Who knows? <laughs> there might be a whole horn section in wherever his hair is. Yeah. A, a quirky and most excellent call for number one, Christine. Love it. All right, okay. Jim, down to you for your okay. number one. Okay, so I'm going to start with an honorable mention. Uh, uh, pick up the pieces. Which is a, a really a real fun one. Love love the horns on that one, and uh, because I can't, I literally can't exist without making a movie reference. I have to bring up that it was included in the movie Undercover Brother, and uh, which which is one of my favorite comedies, and uh, it would definitely be the only time that a uh, a black exploitation hero has been introduced by, by a song by, by a white band. Not just a white band, so, an average white uh, band. Yeah, my number one pick is. I've got to go with this one because it's my favorite. Uh, it's by my favorite funk band. It's my favorite uh, song by them. And that's uh, I Want to Take You Higher by Sly and the Family Stone. Absolutely oh, love yeah. the horns on that. They're not too intrusive, but they're there and they're part of the magic. And I love the way that the uh, that, that dun, 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 like accentuates every part of that song. And it just drives the whole thing forward. It's it's so much fun and so and such a beautiful part of that. And uh, I, this is one of those songs I never get sick of. And it's a, it's a, my opinion, perfect, perfect way to, to bring horns in on something like that and accentuate everything. So that, that is my number one for sure. A damn fine dunk with the nasty funk solid. Good. The joke finally got across without all of the, Technical, yeah, good. And if you're an undercover brother, would like a solid call. It helps so, to hear it. <laughs> yeah, it always helps. This is all going to be edited around. So, uh, I was yeah. about to go make myself a sandwich with lots of mayo. 
<laughs> you must learn yeah. to like mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> love that movie so much. We are music savvy here, folks. We are movie savvy. I love it. Uh, well, I'm gonna just two uh, two very quick honorable mentions for me, and both of them involve the same instrument, and that would be Jane's Addiction, Idiot's Rule, and Paul Westerberg. Not the Paul, not not the replacements. Can hardly wait. Good one in and of itself. But uh, Paul Westerberg off of his eventually album Trumpet Clip, and the trumpet played on respectively Idiot's Rule features Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers, as if there's Flea from any other band. And Trumpet Clip uh, features Tommy Simpson, Paul's old buddy from The Replacements. So those are my two honorable mentions, songs with trumpets in them. But my number one is going to be, uh, so it's from someone who Christine and I will be seeing in a, a few uh, short hours now, Adam Ant from the Friend or Foe album, Desperate But Not Serious. And which means that it's not even a song that features horns. I think the horns drive that song through and through. Awesome, awesome song, awesome album that features horns all over it. Adamant, desperate, but not serious. That song, it drives me delirious. Awesome. Good choice. Which now brings us to our plus one, WTI, What the Instrument. Christine, back to you. Okay, so I kind of already started talking about... Um, you know, my love of new wave music and the random sounds like Depeche Mode with all of the, the bottles clinking and metal clashing and different things in the background. They're instruments, <laughs> even though they're sounds, random things. But what my pick is going to be is uh, Michael Stipe's megaphone in Underneath the Bunker. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, and there's a couple I, other songs that he used a megaphone on, but that was the one that came to mind most profoundly. Yeah, Michael Stipe can get a little too experimental from time to time. And uh, that would definitely be one of them. I, I agree. <laughs> you don't seem um, impressed by the megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad at the megaphone, Jim? <laughs> no, I thought this was a plus one where things didn't didn't fit. Not necessarily. It was good, bad, or indifferent. It was just, oh, okay. you know. Okay, I was seeing yeah. that. That, Mine I thought, was I thought, stuff that I actually like. I like that. Okay. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's just different. It is. All right, Jim. To you for got under your skin or made made you happy, and for a different kind of WTI. What the instrument? Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I just did instruments that I that didn't feel like really fit. So, uh, for my honorable mention, uh, I'm. I'm going to say uh, Bob Dylan, uh, the har his harmonica on the times they are changing. I'm not a huge Bob Dylan fan. I do like that song, but the the fact that he has to stop every 15 seconds and start riffing on the on the harmonica takes me out of er out of the song every time, just when I'm getting into it. So that's my honorable mention. And then for my uh, my pick is uh, is actually going to be the uh, Flea's guitar on Californication by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh. And it's it's a fun song, one of my favorite bands, so I'm not knocking them. But uh, it's the, the guitar playing on that is, is barely there for the first half. And then in the second half, he goes into this riff that's just like, dun, 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 dun. It's just, it's just him twanging, and it's like fingerna fingernails on a chalkboard in the, you know, just twangy in the worst possible way and it just it pr practically ruins that song for me so just you know lo i love the peppers love flea but it just I, that one that that bit has never sat right with me and so uh yeah i kind of wish they, could, they went back to the drawing board on that one there's one guitarist in that band or at least the popular version and that is john Frusciante, or josh playing hopper if you like two albums with him but yeah I, I i'm with you just uh Leave that on a separate mix. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I, I originally just had one honorable mention for my plus one WTI, but Christine bringing up, you know, the, the clinking of things. Uh, I'm going to add in uh, from the song Metal Gods by Judas Priest. There's some, you, it's like soldiers marching, but in actuality, this is pre, you know, of being able to do things with keyboards or sounds like that. It is actually them dropping silverware 
on on the uh, the recording board and just and that's what you hear it's not marching it's silverware clanking metal guys that's like bo- that's like borderline philip glass stuff <laughs> <laughs> you know kk K- K downing and uh and um like glenn tipton guitar wise they, they get a little, little funky although that was probably uh it's a rhythm section maybe so maybe, maybe that was ian hill at the bass idea or it was rob halford i don't know um can't remember which drummer was with them for metal for uh, British Steel album. Dave Holland, uh, yeah, anyway, West Banks, not sure. But the the silverware on metal guys, and uh, we're gonna keep it metal as well, quite literally. And in it, you, you didn't think it would be it could be an instrument, but Eddie Van Halen to kick off the song Pound Cake, to kick off the For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge album, using a power drill on top of his guitar strings. Okay. I don't. I, it, it's 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 different. It's fun. It's Eddie Van Halen. I'm not going to argue with it. But it is not my number one. My number one goes to the xylophone, as played by uh, normally the bass player for for Violent Femmes, Brian Ritchie in Gone Daddy Gone. That is that is a song that great just, pick. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, gra- the early MTV. That one. That song grabbed me and the, the the stark black and white video. But xylophone in a rock song. And it works so well. Love it. And Nar- oh. Narls Barkley, I, I checked out the credits. They do not have a xylophone on their otherwise. It's a great cover. I love Narls Barkley's take on Gone Daddy Gone. But they're just using keyboard sounds that sound like a xylophone. So, hey, kudos for trying to approximate it. But Brian Ritchie, you're my not number one WTI. Well, you know, if we learned anything from, uh, from Sure Shot and the flute on that, it's it's not the instrument; it's how you play it. Anything can work in a, in, a, in a rock song as long as you as long as you play it the right way. Very true. Wh- wh- whether it's silverware or bottles clanking or a xylophone. Exactly. There you have it, folks. Latest three for now in the can. Three songs with horns or a horny H O R N dash Y selection this evening. And our plus one, the WTI. What the instrument. Thanks for, for listening, folks. Once again, thank you for helping us grow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share with at least one person today. Thanks so much. We'll be back real soon here on All Over the Place. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Bye-bye. Never end. I like it when you start up with me.